Okay, I'm back with another video. I was supposed to do this video uh, on Saturday. Got too uh, time restrained with uh, listening to the rest of them, the like newest ones, the ones from Demolition Up, and I just couldn't have time to do the video, and I'm finding time on Monday, so so this is up today. Um, they have, I think, 18 studio albums? I'm not sure. I have all of them. Uh, not on CD. I don't have all of them on CD. I have all of them on the uh, list over here that I have listed. I got it taped to my desk so I can see it while I'm looking at the camera. So, I am... I have a script over here if you don't know. Um, start out with number 14, and yes... Number four, it's number 14, you'll see why. I'm not excluding any albums. Number 14 is Rockerola, of course. The uh, first Judas Priest album, the first one. The songs I like on here is One for the Road, Rockerola, and Diamonds and Rust. Don't like anything else from here. It's just, it doesn't sound like Judas Priest at all. It's mostly when the... It's when they were trying to do something else, and then they realized the uh, importance of the whole metal movement, Black Sabbath. So they went with making heavy metal albums after that. And uh, number 13, we're going to go into number 13, which is uh, Sin After Sin, their third album. Um, This one's usually really high on people's list. I just don't see the importance of this. I see the importance of this album. I just don't see... There's just much better stuff that Judas Priest has done. This is an Aggressor's Good, Starbreaker, Diamonds and Rust again, and Sinner. Those are my favorite ones in here. Um, Yeah, this is an Aggressor, if you didn't know, was on uh, Slayer's uh, South of Heaven album. They did a cover of it on the... Uh, Slayer did a cover of it. Also, ha Hailstorm did a cover of that song as well. On one of their uh, covers EPs. And that leads us into number 12. Number 12 is Ram It Down. Um, it's just, this, this song is, the song has more heady guitars. I just don't like the whole, uh, I just don't like some of the songs on here. That's the thing. Ram It Down's good. Heavy Metal is one of the best songs that they've ever done. Uh, Johnny Be Good, the cover, Monsters of Rock, and that's mostly all that's good on here, and I'm having, as you can see, a oh, problem with my sinus problems, again. Number 11. Number 11 is, well, a lot lower on people's list, Nostradamus. Dawn of Creation is a good opening. Prophecy's good. It's just too damn long. That's the thing about this album. It's just too damn long. There's too many intros and it's just It's a good album. It's just way too damn long Like it's it's mostly I think it's about two hours long. It's ridiculous and how long it is. It's two discs Um, I don't own it Yeah, it's two discs I don't see it being, uh, like, one of their best albums. I see it as, like, one of their le my least favorites because it's just too damn long. It's at number 11. Number 10, or top 10, finally, is going to be Turbo. And it's they were going for the glam metal. It didn't work. We all know the Parental Guidance song is about their previous album, which we'll get to that album. And you'll be surprised to, the, to where that album's at. Um, yeah, Turbo Lover, definitely a classic. It's always a mainstay in their shows. Locked In, Locked In's good. Private Property's good. Uh, anything on here is good. It's just there's so much better stuff than th this. I put this one here because I just don't like the whole feel to it. And it's not like... That metal kind of feel to it. I just can't explain it. Um, next one is Jugulator, of course. Jugulator, they're one with uh, first one without Halford on vocals with uh, 
Timber for Owens. I definitely think Tim Ripper Owens is very underrated, and, well, he did the, uh, Glorious Burden, uh, uh, he did the Glorious Burden album with, uh, Iced Earth, which, if you don't know, that is one of my favorite albums ever, and that's a spoiler for the Iced Earth, if that ever gets up, um, yeah, just awesome songs on Jugulator. There's, like, no song to go wrong with on there. And we'll move on to number eight, because I can't look it up on Spotify, because it's not on Spotify. Um, number eight is Point of Entry, their 1981 album, in between the uh, classic two, uh, Screaming for Vengeance and British Steel. There's, the, every song on here is great. I'm gonna go through and say every song on every album above here is great. Like, my favorite one on here is probably Hot Rockin' or uh, Heading Out to the Highway. Definitely a classic. There's a lot of uh, songs that are very underrated. And let's go to number seven, which number seven, there's three of them at number seven. Um, I think I have two of them. Uh, no, I have one of them. Uh, Firepower, Demolition, and Angel of Rep Retribution. Let's talk about each of them. Let's talk about Firepower first, with uh, songs like the title track, Lightning Strike, Evil Never Dies. It's just some of them are kind of generic on here that I just don't feel like it could be higher. Um, Flamethrower, Spectre, No Surrender, Lone Wolf, There's Necromancer, there's a lot of good ones on here. And there's, and it's definitely, a, it's their newest one, so... It's also into play. It hasn't. It's aged well. It's aged well with people. Let's talk about demolition or the second one with Tim Ripper Owens on vocals. Like more heady guitars than I would ever like think Judas Priest would be capable of. One on one, Machine Man. All these songs surprised me almost. It's just. It just seems like more generic stuff compared to uh, other stuff that is higher. Other albums that are higher. I can't put it any higher. I put the ones that I feel that are like tied together to be tied together. And then that brings us to Angel of Retribution. The one that returned with Halford. Judas Rising. Deal with the Devil. A lot of good ones on here like uh, Angel. Hell Rider. Hell Rider's awesome. A lot of good ones on here. Not perfect, as you would see. Not perfect. And then the next one is number six. I think I have every single one of them. Yep, I do. I have every single one of them from up now. Number six is Redeemer of Souls. I put it higher than Firepower because, well, it's amazing. It's an amazing album. Eh, there's some ones that are not as good as some of the other ones, like Dragonaut's good, Halls of Valhalla's awesome, uh, Beginning of the End, Battle Cry, Hell and Back, Cold Blooded. There's some good ones on here, but then there's some ones that are like I don't I don't dislike the track, and I don't like the track at the same time. So that's why this one is going to be at uh, number six, and there is a three-way tie at number five. Couldn't decide between these three, and couldn't be t tell between Painkiller, which Painkiller has, Painkiller, Hell Patrol, All Guns Blazing, Rather Level, uh, Re Leather Rebel, messed up, Metal Meltdown, Nightcrawler, Between the Hammer and the Anvil, Touch A Touch of Evil, Battle Him, and Glory, uh, One Shot at Glory. Solo work, amazing on here. Guitars, amazing. Everything's amazing. It's just that there's better albums. And let's talk about the other ones that are at uh, number five as well. Hellbutt for Leather or Killing Machine, wherever you're located. Um, Delivering the Goods, Rock Forever, Evening Star, Hellbutt for Leather, Take on the World, Burning Up, The Green Metal Ashy. With the Two Prong Crown, which is a cover song. Killing Machine, Running Wild, Before the Dawn, Evil Fantasies. 
Amazing, amazing album. Um, Hellbent for Leather, my favorite one on here, except the Grave Metal Ishi, which is a cover. Great stuff, great album from 1978. And we're, or, I think it might be 79, 78, I don't know which year, but the album that came right before it, Stay in Class. Exciter, White Heat, Red Hot, which is an amazing song. Better by you, better than me. If you don't know, if you probably are watching this video saying, oh, where does he rank Judas Priest? You probably already know those songs because they are definitely a uh, one that you would know about because of something that happened back in the 80s. Stained Class, Invader, Saints in Hell, Savage, and the Realms of Death, and Heroes End. Amazing song, amazing songs. Um, they, when I seen them, it was in Cleveland, uh, or not Cleveland, it was down in Youngstown. Saints in Hell, they played that song. Love it now. I completely love that song because they played it live and it got me into it. Um, number four, there's no ties up from above here. Number four is Sad Wings of Destiny. Victim of Changes, The Ripper, Dreamer Deceiver, Deceiver. Prelude, Tyrant, Master of Humanity, the t <laughs> I can't remember that lyric, but it's good. The con uh, Master of Humanity, the Conqueror of All. Genocide, Epitaph, and Island of Domination. This is a great album. It's definitely in this, the heavy metal style. It's their first like heavy metal album. It's their second album. Um, the Ripper is a classic. W Victim of Changes is a little bit repetitive on the riffing, but it's still, it's hard. Tyrant's definitely my favorite song of Judas Priest of all time, because of that line, the, uh, Master of Humanity line. I love that song and how it's, or that lyric and how it's sung. Epitaph, that's a very, uh, more, mo like, not metal type song, but it's more of a drawn out song. I love it. And that's it for this album. I'm going to go into the next one, which is uh, Screaming for Vengeance, their uh, 1982 album. Like the, Hel the Hellion slash Electric Eye, Riding on the Wind, Bloodstone, Take These Chains, Pain and Pleasure, Screaming for Vengeance, You've Got Another Thing Coming, Fever, and Devil's Child. Everything on here is amazing. It is not my favorite album by them. The two that are up, the next two are my favorite. But, definitely worth checking out this album. You probably already heard of it if you've heard heavy metal music, because this is one of the albums that you first discover when it's like, oh, heavy metal albums. Uh, Judas Priest, Screaming for Vengeance is like the first one you come across. And the next one, which is British Steel. And you probably already know what number one is by now. But this one is amazing. Breaking the Law, Rapid Fire, Metal Gods, Grinder, United, Living After Midnight, You Don't Have to Be Old to Be Wise, The Rage, and Stealer. You probably would know this album by Breaking the Law and Living After Midnight as being the two most popular songs in metal history. And this album is probably the, the best like one for beginners to get into and this one would probably be on the beginners list too um not anything else to say about this album it revolutionized it made metal mainstream it was the one album that i see as the breakthrough of metal the only one that made metal a thing as society and not just an underground occurrence and that brings us to number one or the best judas priest album is defenders of the faith I know I'm going to get some heat for this. A lot of people don't like as, uh, Defenders of the Faith as much as I do. Not the first album I ever heard of from Judas Priest. I think I found Judas Priest when I was just getting into metal. And it was mostly British Deal and uh, Screaming for Vengeance. But this one I discovered a little bit later down the road with Free Will Burning. The song Free Will Burning. Jawbreaker, Rock Hard, Ride Free, Ride Free. The Sentinel... The Sentinel is a classic. 
If you've never heard that song, go check it out. It's such a cool intro, and it's like, how do they get that intro to sound like that? Love Bites, Eat Me Alive, which is the song that inspired uh, uh, parental, parental, uh, I can't remember that. Pre parental Guidance was the song that uh, got inspired by the uh, Eat Me Alive song. Some Heads Are Gonna Roll, classic, classic in the Judas Priest show. You're gonna hear that song if you go see them. Night Comes Down, Heavy Duty, and Defenders of the Faith. Perfect album. Probably would land on my favorite albums of all time. And not really an album beginners get into because the guitars are way more heady than the, first, than the uh, three that came before it. It's when they were going full speed into the metal category. And then they dipped from it and then completely fell after it. But came back with Painkiller. Painkiller was definitely a good one. That's how I rank Judas Priest. I'd like to hear your rankings in the comment section. This video has been long awaited. I've awaited doing this video. It's been two years in the making, I think, of making the Judas Priest video. Of the, one of my favorite bands of all time. I think that mostly everybody else can speak about how the band is, like, mostly inspired them to go listen to more metal after it. So that's my ranking of Judas Priest. Hope you guys liked it. And uh, go follow my Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe to the channel. It would be very appreciated. But this is where I got to end it. And peace.